Hello. This sermon, this reflection, which is the last I offer to Cuyo Pastoral Church, is based on Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. A few days ago, I had a very good conversation with some friends. Don't worry, it was not face-to-face, it was via Zoom. A good conversation about the notion of membership within the United Church of Canada. And for the wide majority of our people, this concept is so ingrained in the culture of our denomination that becoming a member is a given. This attitude can be summarized by, if you care, you join. This is as simple as this. And your membership even somehow defines your identity. When someone says, I belong to the United Church, usually nothing else needs to be added about one's value or involvement in the community. Well, however, younger generations do not hold the same view necessarily. They do not want to be defined by one single label or forced to fit inside one box. And like many in our community, in our society, they tend to view membership as something one acquires from a business like Costco. Because being a member comes with privilege, discounts, special access. And when they are invited to join our congregation to become members, well, they may ask, what's in it for me? Why would I, what would I gain if I do it? What's my reward? (sighs) This morning, fairly short reading come from the gospel according to Matthew, like I said earlier. And in it, Jesus offer is final instruction to his disciple as he prepared them to continue his mission. And honestly, these words could be seen as very good motivational speech. Jesus empowers his disciple. He tells them that they are nothing less than his representative as God's ambassador on earth. And he uncut, undercuts every form of hierarchy Presuming that only special individual could work as his envoys. No, ordinary people are also allowed to perform this very important task. This pep talk happens right after Jesus told his disciples all about all the struggle they will face. And he does not lie to them. Oh no. Jesus tell them they will not be paid for curing the sick, uh, cleansing the lepers, or casting out demons. They will not be welcome in every house they will visit. They will feel like sheep sent in the midst of wolves. They will be rejected and betrayed by family and friends. And at this point, the disciple probably thought, Beautiful words, Jesus. Yay. But um, what would be the payoff if we accept to join this program of yours? What will we gain? What will be a reward? What are we gaining? What is a reward? Hmm. For many different reasons. Christians have this tendency to see themselves as the privileged beneficiaries of God's love and grace. Because we are constantly told to count our blessings, we say thank you God for everything you bestowed upon us, and oh, by the way, here's my list of all the things I would like to receive from you in the next coming months. Please begin with health and a good paying job. (laughs) However, once in a while, we are reminded of our call to be providers of God's love and grace. The Spirit of God always finds a way to knock at our door 
disturb our member-only gatherings and points out that it is time to share. Yep, that happened. And yet, we often believe that this lifestyle of discipleship is mainly reserved for those who can perform impressive gesture requiring huge sacrifices. Because we have heard so many stories of great heroes of faith, like the one of Francis of Assisi, for example, the son of a rich Italian merchant from the 13th century who completely gave up all his riches to live in poverty and serving God by founding a new religious order. Wow. Great for him. But you, me, we can hardly do the same. But discipleship does not have to be heroic. Most often it begins by dropping our tools or books or electronic device for just a few seconds. Opening our eyes looking around us and see who is in need and doing something about it. Not talking about it. Not creating committees on the subject. Not wishing someone else would take care of it. No, no, no. Us. You. Me. Reaching out to our neighbors as well as those living at the fringe of our society. And sometimes, all that is required is nothing more than giving a cup of cold water to someone who is thirsty, or offering an odd to someone who is grieving, or listening to someone in need of a friend, or offering a ride to someone without a car or volunteering at the local food bank. When we look at it, discipleship is maybe less about what one's gain than how much one gives back. Of course, it's not very spectacular. No, almost nobody becomes famous by doing so. You know, your, our news media gives more attention to someone get, signing and giving a million dollar check than one who volunteer as a coach for a lo local hockey team or organize a playgroup for a preschooler. And still, as we have discovered during this pandemic, the essential workers of our society are not always the people we glamorize. Essential services are often a series of little things we usually take for granted. They are small gestures that have a significant impact in our world, consequences that go beyond what we can see and imagine. As Jesus reminds us, a simple cup of cold water can make a huge and unexpected difference in the lives of those who receive it. Maybe most of the people of our world do not necessarily pay attention to our actions. But God does. Each time we land an object to a relative, knowing the odds to get it back are slim to none. Each time we meet an acquaintance at the grocery store and listen for at least an hour about his or her diseases and medications, each time we petition our elected officials for a better access to justice and resources in our community, even if we are not an important lobbyist firm, 
God notice. Yep, God notice that we see in the fragility and neediness of our fellow human beings the presence of Christ. And God discerns our desire to serve through every moment, interaction, encounter, and conversation. And the reward we receive from God, that God's offer us for our gestures and efforts, well, the reward cannot be quantified according to the consumerism mindset of our world. It cannot be invested in a bank account. And it will not give us special perks when we will arrive at the pearly gate. No. The reward we are promised is to realize that we are on the side, right side of history. To witness the birth of a better world for all. And to understand that we have done the right things for the right reasons. The reward is to learn that we can gain more by serving than being served. The reward is to discover that it feels sometimes as much fulfilling to support someone, a project, support a ministry, than keeping it all for ourselves. The reward is to believe that even the smallest actions can have a cosmic significance for the ones involved and for this world God loves so much. As the expression says, size does not always matter. In just a few sentences, three verses, Today's texts challenge us to think more deeply about our lifestyle. And we are reminded that discipleship is made up of a thousand small gestures and all those small acts of devotion, tenderness, and forgiveness that goes largely unnoticed in our world are in fact the most important ones in our lives. They're the one who makes a difference. They're the ones who open our minds. And for this great undeserved gift, all that we can say is thanks be to God and Amen.